Tumor cells spread in the body by various routes. We have developed imaging technology to visualize cells spreading by these various routes. One of the most important routes of cellular trafficking that can result in metastasis is through the cardiovascular system. In order to visualize cells at high resolution trafficking through the vascular system, we labeled them with green fluorescent protein in the nucleus and red fluorescent protein in the cytoplasm. In this way, we can tell whether a cell is dividing in apoptosis or deforming. In our initial experiments, we imaged tumor cells in vivo as they were trafficking through a very small diameter capillary. Five cells in single file were imaged as they made a tight right-hand right turn in a capillary. We were able to image this movement over a period of 14 hours, but the movement was not very extensive since the capillaries had a very narrow diameter and the cells could barely squeeze through, and by doing so, they were highly de stretched or deformed. We then wanted to image the tumor cells as they were moving more rapidly in a bigger diameter vessel. In order to do so, we made a model in, in a mouse and we made a skin flap from the abdomen exposing a, a blood vessel. We then injected the cancer cells into this blood vessel and proceeded to image them. We're now watching a movie of two cancer cells crawling along the wall of a blood vessel. The cancer cells are labeled with green fluorescent protein in the nucleus and red fluorescent protein in the, nucle in the cytoplasm. Like a typical cancer cell, the nucleus is very large due to extra amounts of chromosomes. However, when the cancer cells went from the smaller vessel into a larger vessel, the hemodynamic force of the blood flow caused them to lose their grip on the blood vessel wall and to flow along with the blood flow. Almost certainly, this would kill the cancer cells. We know now that it is very difficult for a cancer cell to survive as it traffics through the body, and only the rare cell can form a distant metastasis. In this image, we see a number of cancer cells, some of which are stuck or adhered to the vessel wall, and others are crawling. At the bottom of the image, you can see a rolling cell going around the various adhered cancer cells in the vessel, almost as if it had, an, as it had its own navigation system. This cell perhaps has the potential to become a metastasis. We're visualizing here a clump of cancer cells or an embolus that has stuck or adhered to the vessel wall. Another embolus has now collided with the adhered embolus and they have joined together. However, we can see some cancer cells escaping this embolus and continuing to traffic. Some scientists think an embolus is a better candidate to form a metastasis than a single cell since the cells in an embolus can protect each other. We're now watching a single cancer cell navigate a very complex network in the blood vessel. This cancer cell has a big nucleus due to extra chromosomes that most cancer cells have. And you can see how it navigates, sometimes with its nucleus in the front, sometimes with its small cytoplasm at the side or its front. In any event, this cell seems to have great capacity to navigate complex networks in blood vessels and has the potential to make a distant metastasis. Cancer cells can not only traffic in blood vessels, but they have the ability to escape the vessel and start growing in, in the tissue surrounding the vessel, forming a metastasis. The process of a cancer cell leaving a blood vessel or escaping a blood vessel is called extravasation. We now see a time-lapse movie with images acquired about once an hour of cells extravasating from a vessel. There are a number of cells in this vessel and a few of them have the ability to escape or extravasate. These cells seem to poke a hole through the vessel wall with a projection of their cytoplasm and having done so, the cell's nucleus then proceeds to 
also escape through the cytoplasmic through the cytoplasmic projection. Cancer cells also use the lymphatic system to traffic throughout the body. We've now devised a way to vi visualize this type of trafficking in a lymphatic vessel. In this case, we have colored the lymphatic vessels and lymph node with an FITC dextran molecule and are now watching red fluorescent protein expressing cancer cells traffic through the lymphatic vessel and come down into a lymph node where they stop and start to grow. Lymph node metastasis is a very dangerous sign for the cancer patients since cells that have met metastasized to a lymph node can often re-metastasize to more distant organs. This is another image of cancer cells trafficking through a, a lymphatic vessel. In this case we have more specifically labeled the lymphatic vessel with a fluorescently labeled antibody that is specific for lymphatic vessels called LIV1. In this case we can see clumps of cancer cells expressing red fluorescent protein going to and fro in this lymphatic vessel and the lymphatic vessel is labeled with such high detail that we can see cancer cells going through what appears to be a detour in the vessel as well as cancer ce cells going through the main part of the vessel. Cancer cells don't grow in the body by themselves. They grow while interacting with normal cells. This interaction takes place in what is called the tumor microenvironment and we have devised a way to image this process in real time in live mice. We are now looking at a non-invasive image of a tumor. In this case, dual color cancer cells were injected into a mouse that is expressing green fluorescent protein in all its cells. So the normal cells in this tumor, called stromal cells, are green, expressing green fluorescent protein. The tumor cells are expressing green fluorescent protein in the nucleus and red fluorescent protein in, in the cytoplasm, thereby two color. The striking thing about this image, which is taken non-invasively of the tumor growing in the foot pad of the mouth, mouse, is that the tumor cells and stromal cells are in very intimate location with each other. This image is of the same tumor we saw in the last slide where the dual color cancer cells are seen interacting very closely with the host stromal cells. We also can visualize a tumor blood vessel and the flow of red or the flow of green fluorescent protein expressing blood cells in this vessel. Then treated the animal with chemotherapy, in this case doxorubicin and it had a large effect eliminating almost all the cancer cells although some of the stromal cells the expressing green fluorescent protein still remain. In the blood vessel we don't see any more green fluorescent protein expressing lymphocytes but just red fluorescent protein expressing cytoplasmic fragments of dead cancer cells. Our red and green mice, thank you for your kind attention.